Now, for those of you that were unable to hear the information that I shared with you in parts one and two, I'll give you a brief overview of all five streams of income, and then we're going to follow up from where we left off so that in this third part of this three-part discussion, I can give you the final two streams of income of these five streams of income. So for those of you uh, who are listening, number one, the first stream of income is the correct tax withholdings. The first stream of income is the correct tax withholdings. And I'll give you a brief synopsis of what that means in just a moment. The second stream of income is the maximizing of tax deductions. The second stream of income is the maximizing of tax deductions. The third stream of income is the generation of business revenue. The third stream of income is the generation of business revenue. And what I'm going to be discussing today in this third part of this three-part discussion are the final two. The fourth stream of income is, in fact, the elimination of debt. Very, very important, and I'm excited to talk about that tonight. The fourth stream of income is the elimination of debt. And last but not least, the fifth and final stream of income is the creation of passive investments. The creation of passive investments. So again, in parts one and two of this three-part discussion, I've already given you detailed information on the first three of these five streams of income. But to give you a brief synopsis of those first three, number one is the correct tax withholding. So for those of you that get a W-2 from your employer every year, upon being hired for that job, you filled out a W-4 form. If you filled out your W-4 form incorrectly, that means every pay period, the IRS perhaps took more money out of your income, out of your paycheck, out of your wages than they should have. And if in fact they did that, the next year when you get your W-2 from your employer and you go to H&R Block, to TurboTax, or to your CPA or accountant to file your annual taxes, you, sir, you, ma'am, at that point will get a tax refund. The reason why it is considered a tax refund because it is the IRS that's saying to you last year for 12 months, which for some of you were 52 pay periods or 26 pay periods, we took more income tax from your income, from your uh, earnings, from your wages than we should have, but we're not paying you interest for what it is that we took. We're just going to give what we took from you back. So when you activate the strategy of this first stream of income, you change your W-4, which means you shift the income that you're giving every pay period to the IRS and you're bringing it back into your hands so that you can rightfully and legally do with your income, your earnings, your wages, what it is that you want to do. Because as long as you incorrectly fill out your W-4, you will continue to allow the IRS to take more than what they should take out of your income. And they will invest your money and make more money from your money only to give you your return the following year. Which is why this first stream of income is absolutely critical. There are so many people who have apprehensions. They're very uncomfortable about the idea of changing their W-4. If you have any questions, any comments, or any concerns about this first stream of income, which is the correct tax withholding or the changing of your W-4, feel free to revisit our first part of this three-part discussion, or you can Google the IRS.gov's website. You can go to h &R Block. You can go to TurboTax. You can talk to any CPA or tax accountant, and they will tell you how important it is for you to fill out your W-4 
correctly so that you won't give the IRS too much of your income, your earnings, and your wages. The second stream of income that we talked about in part two was the maximizing of tax deductions or business deductions because when you have a business, when you have a business, if you're not a business owner, if you're just an employee, you don't have advantages for the deductions that business owners have. But when you join businesses like we're offering uh, individuals to join or when you have a business, you're able to utilize this strategy that comes from the second stream of income of maximizing your tax deductions. Hey, Roz, good to see you on. How do you utilize this strategy? Because now all of your basic expenses, all of the bills that you pay are not just basic expenses and bills. They're now, as a business owner, a part of your business deductions because you're able to deduct a portion of your rent, deduct a portion of your mortgage, deduct a portion of your car payment, deduct a portion of your gas, your mileage, the maintenance on your transportation or your house or in your job. You're able to deduct uh, what you give to your children as wages. You're able to deduct your cell phone bill, a portion of all of the things that you're utilizing and spending money on every day. But because you are now a business owner, you're able to implement the strategy of this second stream of income, which is the maximizing of tax or business deductions, okay? The third stream of income that we talked about in part two of this discussion was the generation of business revenue. The generation of business revenue. Now, because you have a business, you've got to generate business revenue. Most people who get in business can't generate business revenue because they start their businesses with no money, which is why the first two strategies are important. Because if you want to generate revenue in your business, you have to either have a product or service that you're providing. And if you have a product or service that you're providing, you got to sell that product. If you got a product and a service that you're providing and you ain't selling that product, you ain't making no money, which means you're not generating no business revenue and you actually don't have a business. You just got a good idea on paper. But I want to show you through strategies how you can, number one, minimize your taxes. That's the income stream, number one. Number two, maximize your tax deductions. That's income stream number two. And number three, generate business revenue. That's income stream number three. And you've got to start somewhere. You may have a lot of big things popping in your mind, but you've probably got little things stopping in your life because you don't have a strategy on how to shift whatever income you're making now on your job back into your hands. And once you shift it back into your hands, you simultaneously maximize your tax deductions or business deductions so that you can take all of the income that you have coming in, pay your expenses, which many of your expenses are now considered business deductions, and with whatever money is left, which we call cash flow, you can then invest that into your business so that you can have business cards, you can have advertisements, you can start doing things because you have cash flow to feed your business with or to invest to create business income. So today, in part three, I'm taking only a few moments uh, today to discuss the two last streams of income. Again, you should have the first three. Number one, the first income stream is correct tax withholdings. Number two, the second income stream is the maximizing of business deductions. And number three, the third income stream is the generation of business revenue. And the fourth income stream or stream of income that I want to talk about for a few minutes is the elimination of debt. Most people got debt. And most of us don't see debt as a gateway to create or to generate revenue or income. But let me explain something to you. If you itemize all of your debt, and when I say debt, I'm talking about your car payment. 
When I say debt, I'm talking about credit cards. I'm talking about payday loans. I'm talking about money you owe people that you dodging every week. I'm talking about that mortgage. All of that is debt. If you got a car, you really don't own the car. Not if you're paying a payment on the car. The bank owns the car. They hold the title. You you just you just you you just borrowing the car. <laughs> okay? If you just bought a house and you got a 30-year mortgage, you really don't own the house. You you just borrowing the house. The bank owns the house because they've got the original title deed. Until you pay that car off, until you pay that mortgage off, you just borrowing that car and that house. And all those credit cards car bills uh, that's all that's considered debt. Okay. So when we're talking about elimination of debt as an income stream. Here's what I want you to think about. I want you to itemize and I literally want you to get a list of all the debt you owe every piece of debt you have. I'm not talking about your expenses, things like your cell phone bill, things like your food bill. I'm talking about debt. I want you to get a list of all of your debt, all of your credit card debt, and then I want you to add up how much money every month that you're paying on that debt. Matter of fact, you could take a minute and do it right now. Go ahead. I know some of y'all like, are you going to keep on? I, I want to give you a chance to think about it. Think about all the debt you got, all that debt you trying to overlook and, and you trying to avoid. It, it's still there. I want you to add up every credit card bill that you got, every payment that you make. The average person, if you add their car payment, if you add, yeah, that's right, Charmaine, way too much. If you add their car payment, if you add their credit card bills, if you add their, their merchant loans, their payday loans, loans that they, they got out from other people, if you add their mortgage, the average person, let, let's just say conservatively, if they're paying about $1,500 a month. That's conservative. Y'all know that's conservative because we paying out a whole lot more, which is why they continuing to call us because we can't always pay it on time. But let's just say conservatively between a mortgage, between a car note, and between credit card bills, the average person is paying $1,500 a month. Well, that $1,500 a month got to come from somewhere. That $1,500 a month is coming from your income. And that's why the elimination of debt is a stream of income. Because all of the money that you're paying on debt, here is what you got to understand. You making somebody else rich. Because every item of debt you have has interest attached to it. It has interest attached to it. You're paying interest for that car especially if it came out of a buy here, pay here, you paying interest for that car, especially if your credit was tore up from the flow up, you ain't have a dollar in your pocket, but they gave you that car. You just signed on the dotted line, but you paying 15, 20% interest for that car. You paying interest for that house. You definitely paying interest for those credit cards. But here's what I want you to understand with the money you make, your money is making somebody rich. I want you to think about that. Excuse me. I say your, your money is making somebody rich. Your, your money is making somebody rich. I got all y'all where I want you today. Because I only got a few more minutes and I got to give you the business today. All right. Your money is making somebody rich. Here's the question. Who is it making rich? Because if it ain't making you rich, your money making somebody rich. Because if there's interest attached to your car payment, if there's interest attached to your credit cards, if there's interest attached to your mortgage, then that means you are making somebody rich with the money you're making. And so the elimination of debt is the fourth stream of income because we show you through our business how to do what we call and financial experts call it debt stacking. So, for example, let's assume that you got into the business. Let's assume that you became a part of our Next Level Wealth movement. And let's assume that you filled out your W-4 incorrectly when you got the job. 
and Uncle Sam, the old uncle around the corner, taking a little too much money out. So let's just assume you took the first step and you utilized the strategy from the first stream of income by correcting your tax withholdings, which means that $100 or $200 a month that's coming out of your, your check, that's going directly to under Uncle Sam, now that you've joined the movement, now that you're considered a business owner, you go back to your HR department, you go back to your employer, you change your W-4 because now you're going to add more allowances or e e exemptions so that you can tell Uncle Sam, I don't want you to take my money, Unc, throughout the year. I want to take my own money and do what I want to do with it. So let's just assume conservatively that you get $100 or $200 a month back. It's easy to say $200, especially if you ain't claiming children or anything. But the average person, it may be somewhere around $100, $200 a month. So let's just say for this conversation, it's $200 a month, okay? So that's strategy number one. You got your money back. So that means between the next one or two pay periods, you're already seeing a pay raise. So you're already going to the next level. Number two, now that you're a business, you utilize our cash flow manager so that you can start tracking your income and expenses and all the bills you're paying, you're itemizing those bills now, you're keeping receipts for those bills, you're tracking those bills because a lot of those bills that you're going to pay anyway are now business deductions because you are a business owner. I hope you're still with me. Number three, you start generating business revenue because... You already got an extra $200 coming in. So now you start looking at your life and seeing where you can find $10 here, $5 there. Because if you get that money back from Uncle Sam, you ain't going to ball out of control this weekend. You ain't going to buy a Gucci bag. You ain't, you ain't trying to get some red bottoms. You trying to get to the next level financially. You're trying to break the perpetual cycle that you've been living in. So now let's assume when you get to the elimination of debt stage that you say, all right, I've got eight credit cards, I've got a car payment, and I got a mortgage, and I'm going to just start with the lowest credit card. So I got a $38 a month credit card. Now you got these $200 from your first stream of income that you shifted back to you and told Uncle Sam around the corner you can't have it. Let's just say you take those $200 and add it to that $38 credit card bill. If you do the math in which we have the software for you to do the math with, you may realize that your credit card bill that you're paying $38 a month for with that extra 200 can be paid off in four months. Now, in four months, you take that $238 and you add it to that $78 credit card bill. Before you know it, Within 18 months, perhaps within two years, all your credit card bills are paid off. And every time you pay a bill off, you stack that payment that you were paying on top of that initial amount of money that you were paying. And let's say you got a $400 car payment. And now, because you have no credit card debt, you freed up four or five or six or seven or eight credit cards $30 here, 25 there, but you started with the 200 you just got back from Uncle Sam, you might end up with four or $500 or more. I've seen people that end up with more. But let's just say two years from now, you started with 200 adding that to a $38 credit card bill, pay all your credit card bills off, and you end up, let's just say, with 500 Now, in two years, guess what you can do? You can take that five, add it to the $400 car payment, and you may be able to pay your car payment off in less than 7 to 10 months. You take the remaining money from the car payment, now that you've added it with the five, and now when you send your $800 mortgage uh, payment, you add that extra nine. Now, you ain't even did no great business. All you did was shifted your income and utilize the money that was being taken from you with your taxes. There are people who pay off 30-year mortgages in seven to eight years because they utilize and implement the strategies that I'm talking about.